Hello, everyone. And welcome to Word Funk. I'm Leon Thomas, and I am joined, as usual, by Austin Yorsky and Johnny Maloney. Uh, Austin, as my lawyer, <laughs> legally binding, yes. If I commit a crime right before the purge, <laughs> if I escape after being like arrested, like right before it happened, but like I escape while the purge is in effect. Mm-hmm. Am I good? That's a phenomenal question. So I have never seen one of the purge movies. I've... Oh, I've seen all four. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> okay. But my understanding is the premise is <laughs> that all crime is legal during the purge. Now, what be- which includes, being... I just want to be clear here, food safety violations in any <laughs> restaurants in the neighborhood. So if you've ever wanted yeah. to take a piss in the lobster bisque, do it during the purge, baby. Can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. But my understanding is while all crime is legal during the purge, the actual implementation is that no cr- no laws are enforced during the purge, which is actually technically something else, but whatever. That's that that's just the you know, the movie. So the, the point is that there are no there are no conse- there are no legal consequences to things you do during the purge. Uh-huh. But my other understanding is the like the socio economic underpinnings of the film universe yeah. is that it's really about uh punishing poor people <laughs> um, yeah yeah the, the uh the social commentary of the all four pros movies is basically that rich people are bad and they want to murder us mm-hmm. and that's that's what that's what the movies are more or less about it's more complicated than that yeah but i think isn't feel it like more enough. rich people are bad and they want poor people to murder other poor people well that well some well sometimes the rich people do actively get involved in the murdering but yeah pr- predominantly the biggest of the rich people want to sit at the sidelines and just hope that like population gets thinned out and various other bad evil uh snidely whiplash mustache twirly kind of things mm-hmm. and i say this like as if this is such an over-the-top scenario and it is but like um it it the movies do tap into a kind of um apathy that where where like that the rich like just do not care what happens uh to the lives of poor people um and i like i watch these movies and they're very over the top which, and which blunt. one is your favorite <laughs> that's a great question i think the third is my favorite but they're all just okay <laughs> like none of them none of them are like great movies the first one i guess is the weakest um they don't really get into a lot because it's but, not um, about the purge it's a home invasion movie right yeah it's it's, it's mostly Panic a home invasion too yeah it's a home invasion movie with just uh, a little bit of the uh, there's no world building the world building is happening outside of the house but you're in the house the whole time whereas the next three movies there's a lot more world building um i'm giving these movies way too much credit <laughs> Leon, but, um, as outside counsel as a consultant uh-huh. i'm gonna say that if you commit the crime before the purge you're still on the hook for it what I was yeah, going to say I... is that it depends on your socioeconomic status. If you're rich, it doesn't matter. If you... Yeah, that's true. But 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 my, my if if the purge were fair, and it's not, oh, and it's okay. not real, and it's not real. Um, but if the purge were real and it were uh, fair, I would think that I would still suffer the consequences of any actions I did before the purge, mm-hmm. even if I escaped. But but I think I could. I think we could. Possibly expunge your record uh, from resisting arrest, though. Yeah, that's the, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, like if I'm arrested during, like, right before the purge, like whatever I did, like I don't know, I I punched a, an old lady. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, and that would be still, I'd be still on the hook for that, even after the twelve hours of the purge. Mm-hmm. But if I escape during the purge, they can't arrest me for escaping they could only like say i ah, get back here for punching the old lady yeah. but that other thing i guess you got you got away with that um so anyway they wouldn't, they wouldn't be trying to apprehend you during the purge because there's no enforcement no, no, my thing but yeah. no, no no they're not gonna appreh- rap, try to apprehend me during the purge but after it's done the police are gonna go buck so, wild so that would definitely be a great me time back. to get your fuck on is it because <laughs> you know you're going to jail right like yeah is there yeah, ever bad. a plot point in any of the Purge movies that after the Purge is over, they try to prosecute 
people, I presumably poor people, for crimes they did during the purge and claim they were before or after? That has not happened yet. Uh-huh. Um, there's a lot of like we need just we need to just wait this out kind of stuff that happens during the purge. But like there there's no like one week later and this happened. We only really see the direct aftermath of the purge in the purge movies, like the most recent purge movie that I just saw the other day. Um, we get like the f- few hours before the purge, and then the purge, and then like the ten minutes immediately afterward. Yeah. Um, so what you're yeah. telling me is, is when we inevitably get the Purge television series, yeah, it's going to be like happening. twelve episodes of just boring regular drama, and then <laughs> episode thirteen, everybody just goes nuts. Now, I don't, if exactly... they actually made a Purge TV show, there it would be alternating timelines. Like the, every episode would have parts in the Purge, and also before, and probably after. Austin, are you, like, you, you keep saying this, like, hypothetically, are you unaware of the fact that there is a Purge television series? Uh, I was, yeah. Yeah, oh, no, there is. They made a Purge television series, and it debuts in September. Oh, okay, so it's not out yet. Okay. No, yeah, it it, it exists, like, it just hasn't existed in, in my eyeballs yet. I was making um, a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, last thing on the Purge. <laughs> it's, nice, it's nice to know that... I have my fingers on the pulse of people who demand to be taken seriously. Um, but earlier, Leon, you said something like, oh, it's, ver- it's very silly. But it is kind of just uh, the praxis of the actual real ideology of, yeah. the, you know, especially American uh, conservative thought that, like, demographics is destiny and we need to thin the herd of the Browns and we need mm-hmm. to... You know about the the Quiverful movement? Have you ever talked about this fucking oh, thing? Oh, God. Oh, there's, my God. There's white people who, like, their entire belief is they should have as many kids as possible because that's how democracy yeah. works. It's fucking terrifying. It's... I, I don't even know if I recommend Googling it because it's, like, oh, cultists exist. Like, yeah. You know, like from like H.P. Lovecraft, but in real. Um, <laughs> so like, it, it's not actually that far off, except for the fact that I, my understanding, once again, I haven't seen the movies, is that the people in the Purge movies didn't have to be like coerced into doing it so much until, uh, is that the, 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 this new one's well, about? Well, okay. Okay. The the fourth movie is the prequel. Yeah. And the, in the fourth movie, we learn that the first Purge they basically, in order for this to get off the ground, they paid a lot of um, basically poor people to mm-hmm. participate in the purge and to stay like in Staten Island where it was going to be tested um, for the first time. And anyone who didn't want to be part of it could just leave, but everyone who wanted to stay would be given like a cash incentive. Yeah, so, so like... th- that's what I thought from the commercials was basically they had to like prime the pump of this mm-hmm. by making it. Yeah, so this reminds me of the very real thing, which was uh, the, in the American War on Drugs in the 80s, the CIA flooded poor communities with crack, cocaine, uh, so that they would basically be able to in- mass incarcerate all of them, and also drug wars would have them all kill each other. That sounds like a conspiracy theory. It's just <laughs> literally true. Like, yeah, it, the, the documents are out there. Um, so, like, our government has purged black communities before i guess we, uh, we've bombed i believe philadelphia a uh, black wall street or talk about how there's cities in florida that literally wiped off the map like places have been purged before it's just a matter of scale yeah so anyway wow eight, nine minutes on the purge boys in 2018 <laughs> Yeah, I mean they're still doing them. Like <laughs> there, there's the fourth one just got released, and I just had to see it. And the the TV series starts uh, in a couple months, and one assumes that if the TV series hits, that there will be even more purging uh, going forward. Um, we'll see. Uh, they're not like. Does any okay? So I don't know if we ever talked about this. I just brought it up, and I'm just really interested in if you guys have heard about this. It seems like it should be a bigger deal. But do you guys know that in the 70s, uh, the or I think it was this no, it was the 80s, uh, that the city of Philadelphia dropped bombs on its black communities, like bombs. It sounds like the kind of thing you've told me about before, but refresh my memory. I mean that that's really it. There was just when you, when you um, say they dropped bombs. Uh-huh. Do you mean like like legit like Air Force? Um, let me National try to find. Guard was like boom, or did like somebody just walk in with a briefcase and you know leave it somewhere unsupervised, as they uh, say? 
I'm reading from Wikipedia now. Uh, from a Pennsylvania State Police helicopter, Philadelphia Police Department Lieutenant Frank Powell proceeded to drop two one-pound bombs, which police referred to as entry devices, made of FBI-supplied water gel explosives and a dynamite substitute. Entry devices. Yeah. Um, as so in, yeah, like, entry something. into somebody's, like, body? Like, uh, the to result- their bloodstream? The resulting explosion ignited a fire from fuel from a gasoline power generator, uh, blah, blah, blah. Approximately 65 houses. Um, yeah. That's uh, 11 people, including five children, died in the resulting fire. So, yeah, Philadelphia bombed. It was There was basically black civil rights people who were uh, there, oh. and they didn't like that. In the yeah. 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Nice anyway. to know that uh, we live in much more enlightened times now. I just... I, they didn't teach me that in school, and so when I found out, it was like, that seems important. Yeah. Not like the police are militarized now. <laughs> no. Um, I had I told you guys about the fucking, like, armored helicopter I saw a couple weeks back, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, like, it's it's wild out here, boys. Anyway. Yep. Um, so stuff, things. I have other things, but, like, I started, so if, if you guys mm. want to uh, take it a different topic, that's okay. I have, like, four other things, though. So. Oh, snaps. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I can do one. Um, so I just finished playing uh, Yakuza 0, mm. a PlayStation 4 game. I talked about Yakuza back, I think, when I finished 4. That was, like... A million years. That wasn't on Word Funk, probably. That was probably on literally like on the Blister Thumbs podcast or something. Um, that's how long ago it was. But the Yakuza series, which started um, on the PlayStation 2 in like the mid 2000s, is like low key one of the most interesting like major franchises any publisher has. And I- it's coming to PC. Yeah, I I think the timeline that we we entered the dark timeline when Grand Theft Auto became the it game and nobody played Grand and nobody played Yakuza. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not exactly alike, right? Like obviously Grand Theft Auto has a lot more car stuff and guns. Yakuza, as the name implies, is about the Japanese mafia, and since guns are illegal in Japan, it's mostly fist fighting. Um, but the the similarities are pretty obvious. The the crime stuff, the the open world stuff, the meticulously recreated cities uh and the, the side just, activities yeah yakuza is just so so much fucking better um you can just spend like dozens of hours just do just doing shit in the cities without even touching the main story and i think when i talked about yakuza 4 i said like oh this is this is the first video game series that has performances like the people in it are acting like noticeably the way actors do and that's not true anymore obviously because like the last of us and uh you know the tomb raiders and stuff like we have the detroit give... becoming human <laughs> yeah like people are giving performances now but like back in like the playstation 2 era like it just wasn't how games were made and they were at, they were trying right obviously the localization was a bit rough the series has a history of uh, there's like several novels worth of text in every game, so there's a lot of mistakes in there, but they're doing their best. Anyway, uh, Yakuza 0, the one I just played, is a prequel. It's set in the 80s, uh, specifically during a, an enormous boom in the Japanese economy. And so while the game is, yes, about Japanese gangsters punching each other, it's actually about, like, the whole game revolves around this real estate deal and about how this, like, new influx of money has created, like, this like wave of viciousness within the yakuza because there's so much money up for grabs but at the same time money doesn't mean anything to anybody there's like literally a couple conversations where someone says like man what even is money <laughs> like it's like very um it's very austin <laughs> i guess you could say about that uh there's, there's a lot of that shit but it's also like a, there's a whole subplot about like the sentiment of like Chinese immigrants because of all the war crimes Japan did on them. And like, there's a lot going on. It's like, I, the series has this reputation for being like, Oh yeah, it's the one where you can play claw games in an arcade for six hours. And then you punch 200 dudes in the head. And I was like, yeah, but actually I think there's some really legitimate, uh, interesting storytelling going on there. And it, I, I feel like everybody should be playing these games. Yakuza 0 got the biggest uh, reception of any of them in America. It had, like, a kind of... It, w- it went, like, m- low-key viral, I think, because it came out during 
a really down period in game releases. So it, it got it sold pretty well, and they're releasing more of them now. Um, the remakes of one and two are coming out. We still haven't got the feudal Japan one, and the uh, I don't think six is out yet, but the, it's coming. Um, but the series is so fucking good. It's so good, and I wish more people played it. I don't love the the, the punching. It's a kind of a spiritual successor to like you know Streets of Rage or Golden Axe, where you just like you know just smash until the person stops moving, which is fine. But uh, it has so many characters, and it's plotted like a f- like a film, but not in a way it's like where it's like trying to be Michael Bay. It's trying to be more like The Godfather or something. Just a lot of people in rooms, pregnant pauses while people smoke cigars, and you know think to themselves, it's just like it's not like anything else in video games, and it's just really fucking cool. So, so the other one that's that's coming out, uh, Kiwami, is that like is that a Kiwa- remake of the first one? Yeah, the Kiwami, which I don't, I think it means like. It doesn't mean remake. I believe it, it means no. It ex- means it means extreme. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. Yeah, it means extreme. But the, the, if, the, if the game has Kwame in it, that's a remake. So there's Kwame one and Kwame two, which are remakes of one and two. Right. So the the series goes one, two, three, four, five, six, zero, Kwame one, Kwame two, and there's also a a non canon spinoff called Dead Souls, where Japan gets invaded by zombies. Um. That is not a good game. I reviewed it. I think I gave it like a six or something. The it, the combat is just deeply unfun, but it's funny. And that's the thing that's that's great about these games is they have the tone I love where it's like joke, joke, joke. Oh, God, there's so much blood. Joke, 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 joke. Like in Zero, you help Michael Jackson film the thriller video because it's the 80s. Um, and then you have to – there's a – uh, dominatrix who's like too nice to her customers you got the teacher to be degrading and then it's like oh my friend is being tortured to death and i have to watch this eight minute cutscene of this and then it's like anyway so where was i oh yeah there's this guy he's called the living erection because he's horny all the time <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's it's it, the, the swings in tone are wild and i don't know if it's because of my mental health issues or what but it's it appeals to me in such a deep way <laughs> um and it also doesn't really do that prequel thing where it's like we don't have a story we want to tell. We just kind of want to give backstory to the things that are already in the series, you know, like the star Wars prequel stuff where it's like, Oh, we had to know that. Um, there's just a little bit of that. Mostly it's really about this real estate deal and about how Japan's culture was shaped by this, this economic boom and just the, just what, you know, greed does to people and stuff. So there's a little bit of it, but like you don't actually see all that much of the transformation of the characters, um, to, to some people, disappointment. I think one of the most famous characters in the series is uh, this guy named Majima, who goes around in like a snake uh, skin jacket and just beats the fuck out of people with baseball bats. Wait, 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 like, wait. Yeah. Does he wear a snake skin jacket because it's a symbol of his? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna do the Nick individuality Cage. and belief yeah, in per- yeah. freedom of personal choice. Uh, so I thought there was literally going to be a scene where he like, at a very important moment, he finds it and he says something shit like that. And it's like, oh, that's where he got it from. But like, no, like at, at the very end of the game, like literally, I think it might be during the credits or just before he like, he does get one, but it's not a plot point. It doesn't, it's not dramatic. He's just wearing it. So it, it doesn't do that stuff where it's like, oh, that's where he got the jacket from. Um, but it. Yeah, Majima is very interesting because he's like I was gonna say he's like the Joker of the Yakuza universe because he's just like this wild, unhinged dude who's extremely popular with the fans. But he's so popular that they keep bringing him back and keep giving him more character development and more like making him more likable, which kind of goes against his whole thing. So in this game, this prequel, he's almost an entirely different person, and you're like, oh, there's gonna be a moment where he snaps and becomes the Majima we know, and I'm like, not really, like. He has a couple parts where he's at kind of a, at a, a, like a low point, and he it's you know his he challenges his outlook. But then at the end, he's just like, "I got a jacket. I guess I'll see you later." <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's not a big thing. It's just a really fucking weird game. I love it. Um. Anyway, I could go on, but I think I, more people should play these. They're I'm, like a I'm niche looking thing, forward to them. But I am. I think I yeah. I feel like they should have been on PC a long time ago. Oh yeah, <clears throat> fucking Sega. What are you doing, you idiots? But, you know, but that's that's the funny thing is that like Sega Sega's been really forward thinking about a lot of the shit that they bring to PC. Like they they own Creative Assembly pretty much. You know, like mm-hmm. almost all the Total War games were were produced by Sega. You know, um, uh, Alpha Protocol 
from Obsidian Entertainment. They, um, is that right, Obsidian? Yes. Um, they, they brought that, you know, like... Yeah. Man, Sega, I fucking Sega love brought... Alpha Protocol. Can we talk about Alpha Protocol, Johnny? How fucking good is that game? Alpha Protocol was so good. I played it multiple times, which is nearly unheard of for me. Like, in a row. I love that game. It's yeah. the... <laughs> that's that's the New Vegas team. Um, I've scrolled through our questions a little bit here, and we have a question about New Vegas, so I'll save it to there. But I can talk about that game more too because, fucking damn, every game they made is so good and, and very buggy, extremely extraordinarily unforgivably buggy, but very good. Anyway, Leon, I'm done with video games. How are I you? I will I will take charismatic and buggy over, mm-hmm. like excellently optimized and terrible. Yeah, polished and boring. Yeah, L- Leon. Yeah. Oh, I have a couple things. Uh, one is short, but I feel like we have to talk about it, okay. or at least mention it on this show. Um, friend of Wordfunk, Daddy Jack Schnatter. Oh my um, god! No, I saw this! Yeah, he um, basically he was on a conference call and said the N-word, so apparently he's like a 19-year-old gamer. Um, <laughs> he, had so... a heating pe- he had a heated pizza moment. <laughs> did he, he did, did he make a YouTube video apologizing and being like, oh, man, you know, like, I'm an amateur comedian, you know, I try to say things that shock people just to make you laugh, and sometimes they don't land. I am truly yeah. sorry. Yeah, he did apologize, but he is apparently off the Louisville Board of Trustees, whatever the fuck that <laughs> means. Um, like, I, like, I thought he well, got, wait I a thought minute. He got deep-sixed from his franchise ages ago. Yeah, like, like, here's the thing. Like, he's still a, a bunch of things. So every time he fucks up in public, <laughs> he has to lose like one aspect of his personality or life. They but just, like, he still they has... just spin the schnatter wheel, and like whatever comes up, it's like, and you're kicked out of the country club. Yeah, it's like, oh, but I mean, maybe uh, if <laughs> maybe if we, we find out. Um, he colluded with Russia uh, <laughs> for over the election. Like he'll, you know, <laughs> we'll kick him out of the PTA. Don't, don't. They they don't get very good pizza there, you know. They, I guess not. Um, uh, can we say is. we were so far ahead of the curve on that? We were dunking that fool like years ago. <laughs> I just yeah. want to say that we we called that shot. That dude was a g- fucking dirt bag from a mile away. Yeah, if anything, we're Papa John uh, hipsters about this. <laughs> we yeah. hated this fool before it was cool. Um, and his pizza's not even good. Yeah, there's not that much more to say about that. I did want to say very briefly that I watched Wild Things last night. <laughs> I want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, one more I thought watched... on Papa John's is I want to say that isn't it a weird coincidence that people who don't want to pay their workers are also racist? That's wow weird. that's weird <laughs> anyway yeah. the thing you did yeah i watched wild things last night on a whim um i just had a couple hours and i was ahead of, of my like work stuff now, so was now like, was this a first time viewing no god no I, I, here's the weird thing i've seen this movie a bunch of well, times I was, I was just thinking i was just gonna i, I wanted to ask because if it was yeah. a first time viewing i was like wow you're reacting remarkably calm to this movie <laughs> Well, no, here's the thing. Like, every, I don't know, five years, I watch Wild Things. <laughs> I guess that, that sounds about right, based on how many times I've seen it and the time when it was released in 1998. Um, I Okay, but, so for the audience, I've never heard of this. I just looked it up. Apparently, it's a 1998 American erotic Oh, my thriller. God. You're, you've you're never so young. heard of Wild Things? <laughs> what? There's no phrase in the English language that makes me less interested in a movie than erotic. Oh so, my god. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. This you, movie was weird. infamous. Yeah, here's the thing. I was like, eight when it came out. Anyway. No, I understand. And listen, you know me. Like, the idea that I'm sitting here watching an erotic thriller is is very unusual. But here's the thing about this. There's two reasons to watch this more than once. Uh, like, I guess every five years, which is what I do. Um, no, I don't mean, like, I time it, by the way. I, it's not like bring a dude <laughs> where it... <laughs> It has to happen. It is the night. The ritual must commence. (laughs) Right. I just mean that. That's probably about how long it is between viewings. But anyway, um, there's two reasons to watch this more than once. One is it's actually really funny. (laughs) It's actually a really funny movie. Um, The plot is basically that everyone in Florida is so hot 
that they're just really horny all the time and they hate each other Austin, and they kill each other. That's a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent true. In fact, yeah. um, I, there's a long persisting rumor that Florida State University has its own strain of, I believe. I believe it's her, uh, herpes or syphilis, mm-hmm. but like we're just ridiculously horny. Like it's yeah. preposterous. Hypothetical amount of question: yeah. Yeah. Does the hotness of the denizens of Florida remain as hot if they move to other states? I wouldn't know. The hmm. other good reason to watch Wild Things is there's like seven twists in the movie, and they're all ridiculous. I can never remember how it ends. So every five years, I'm like, what happened in Wild Things? And I just watch it. I'm like, oh. Um, and each time there's a twist, I'm like, right, now I remember. But it's not – It's not. these twists don't always make sense, and that's fine. But the the world is so ridiculous, like, built around it, that it just kind of makes sense every time there's, like, a betrayal or something. Um, for for anyone who wants to know, like the real plot of of the, of the movie, because apparently Austin has never even heard of before, this. Before you go on, I just want to say that it's like it's either remarkable, like like a total genius move, or just idiot savant work to make a movie that's so forgettably charismatic that people forget what's going on and then are like, I think I have to watch that again. Yeah, I I don't I don't know if they plan to make it good. I just but it it, it has stuck with me. I just can't ever remember the details. All right, but since run, I just run it, it down for us, Leon. Give us the plot since synopsis I, for Wild Things. Since I just watched it last night, it's fresh in my mind, and hopefully I will get most of this right. Um, I haven't fucking so, seen it for years, so don't look at me. Okay, Matt Matt Dillon is is like a high school guidance counselor, and um, Denise Richards is uh, a student at his high school. And she wants to fuck him. And then it seems like she does. But then she accuses him of rape. And then Nev Campbell is also a student at high school. And she accuses him of rape. And we're like, oh, well, I mean, they're both doing it. So obviously that is what happened. But, I mean, spoilers for wild things. Um, What happens is it turns out, seemingly, that uh, the two girls colluded with each other to defame this man and then you're like oh the movie's over is it <laughs> but no um this movie has like not a very good 3x structure there's just like vignettes <laughs> and one after another but then we find out that what actually happened was that the three of them were working on this together so they could sue the mother of the richest girl that he did not rape and then they have a three-way and I and at the time this was like a big deal, because it's like we're we're seeing like like a lot of girls kissing each other, woo, in a movie. <laughs> it's like it was the '90s, and there just weren't that many erotic thrillers. It was like when everybody um, got really excited about Tattoo. Do you guys remember Tattoo? Yeah. Wow, they kiss kind of on stage, yeah. and then um, one of them turned out to be homophobic, which was weird. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So, and that, but then we find out that they, there's actually another thing going on. And then we find out that there, there's like, it's like a Russian nesting doll of like plot twists where like everyone is like working three or four different sides. And Bill Murray is in it and he is good. Um, oh, so I don't Why want, did you say that? He's good. He's very good. Um, I, 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 I would say more about Bill Murray's character. But, like, I don't want to I, – I guess I don't want to – I feel like I've spoiled a little of Wild Things, but that's just, like, the first half an hour. There's, like, another hour and a half Leon, left of, of twists. Leon, yeah. it's been 20 years. I know, but Wild Austin hasn't out. seen it. I think, I think spoiler alert is, like – well, I know I know the spoilers. Bill Murray is the wild thing and it turns into an adaption <laughs> of where the wild things are. <clears throat> it's, it's a pre- um, it's a prequel actually to the Spike Jones joint that mm-hmm. uh, how do you there's guys, a lot of How do you guys feel about that movie by the way? I liked it. I haven't seen it. It's really unique. Yeah. I haven't seen where the wild things are but I have seen wild things like 6 uh, times well, well, so I feel like that's It's that pretty counts. much the same thing, Leon. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of that, and Kevin Bacon is in it, and, uh... The it's, it's, the Baconator? Uh, oh yeah, he's all up in it. You get to see his penis and everything. Oh yeah, um, okay, well, is it on Netflix, or what? 
No, you have to buy it. Well, then what the fuck? Okay. This or you is could rent the- it. <laughs> Plot, yeah, twi- I mean, plot twist yeah, after plot a... twist. First Bill Murray, Murray, then Bacon, now no Netflix. Just too many plot twists, Leon. Sorry, there's a lot. Um, but yeah, it's good. Uh, Nev Campbell is really good in this movie. She's usually playing, like, n- nice girls. But she plays this, like, sort of, like, fidgety, uh, like, er, I'm, I'm upset about things uh, character quite well. Um, so what happened, I, what I happened like the... to her? She's fine. She she was in House of Cards recently, and she is in uh, the new uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson movie uh, coming oh, out. Oh, Die like Hard, Skyscraper. No, it's called Skyscraper. Yeah, and, Die like, Hard. She's, she, yeah, she's still in things. She's still in <laughs> like she's still in major mo- motion pictures. Uh, she's just usually not the star of them, which is fine. You know, I mean, I'm sure she's okay. Uh, <laughs> um, good for yeah. Good that's for it. you, that's it. Ms. That's, Campbell. Yeah, she did all right. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about Wild Things. I could go on about the sex scenes, but it would just be weird. It would be extremely <laughs> like, I want weird. Details. <laughs> do you do you do you want to hear about the sex? Speaking um, of sex, um, I I've been fact checking my uh, STD claim. So the rumor is that it's gonorrhea that we have oh. we have our own strain of. In fact, Urban Dictionary has a, an entry for the seminal. Seminals are the you know, mascot of our school. The seminal is defined as a sexually transmitted disease contracted only by students attending Florida State University. So, uh, also we're the third highest in just the amount of STDs our student body has. So that's there's there's like that's the kernel of truth to the thing people say about us. Hey, Austin, okay. maybe, maybe. bronze medal is still something to be proud of. Thank you. Maybe it's not so much you guys are horny, so much as you guys can't like figure out condoms. Oh, Florida is a strictly abstinence-only education system, so <laughs> that's probably uh, not helping. What I don't understand uh-huh. is how you guys manage to fuck so much in such hot weather. Yeah, like, I, I like ugh. nothing. Nothing kills my mood more than it being already sticky and humid. <laughs> It'd be like, you know what? It's like super uncomfortably hot, and also I'm like half drenched in sweat, and I don't smell that great. So, do you want to <laughs> amplify this like times ten? Is the college motto "Let's get stickier"? <laughs> I feel like it's the thing is you're already sticky, so fuck it, you might as well. Like when I'm cold, I don't want to get naked. Like it's I'm wanting to bundle up, but if I'm already hot, I'm wearing as little as possible anyway, and it's like so little work to just do the damn thing. Yeah, in the comment section, someone write the show and let let me know what um, "Let's Get Stickier" is in Latin. <laughs> I, when when it's cold out, I like the sex because then afterwards you get to like get all the blankets and like snuggle up and be like, mm-hmm. "We just made ourselves warm." Mm, <laughs> oh nice. my god! <laughs> it's like it's like a hot water bottle except as a verb. Jesus. There is some imagery that ran through my head, and I'm not going to share it, but I just want you all to know, mildly aroused. Anyway. It's probably true, Austin, just so that, you know, we're clear. Yeah. Uh, Johnny. <clears throat> yeah. Did you, did you do anything this week that you yeah, want to Yeah, I, I nearly killed myself twice. I saw you tweeted about this. You eat yeah. too fast? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, um, I, I had two brushes with mortality this week that made me, like, like, living alone has become, you know... Kind of a, a, you know, it has ups and downs, right? <clears throat> I'm still yeah. kind of like grappling with the fact that I I lost someone that I was very deeply in love with, you know, and and I'm not gonna get that back. Um, and how awkward it is to try and like establish relationships with new people and things like that. So, but it's like I can always just sit down on the couch and be like, I'm gonna rewatch all of Deep Space Nine. Which, incidentally, I started this week as well. Good for you. And I'm already on season three. Yeah, well, you know, I'm... Lonely. Anyways. Yeah. um, So, yeah, this week I had a couple of scares where it was like, wow, you know, like... I might have died twice. And, like, nobody would have found me. I like I nearly I I choked on some food that kind of eventually found its way down the wrong the right tube, pardon me. Yeah. Um but like for a brief moment there was that like flash of panic in my brain that somebody was going to find me naked on the floor with like a bunch of spoiled sushi next to me and being like 
that's weird. But you know, it it resolved. You know, I was I was able to work it. Um, okay. Uh, drop it and reverse it. Yeah. But uh, and yeah, and then a couple of days later, I slipped in the shower, which again would just be like somebody f- finds me naked face down in the shower water still running like just music probably still on shuffle not even done washing so there's like two kinds of stink right jeez and uh but but luckily i landed on my posterior oh. right which is like pretty well padded for a man of my yeah. my uh, uh build um, what i'm trying to say is i got a great ass <laughs> i believe to it. uh to quote um uh um wow i can't believe i just forgot his name al Pete. pacino al pacino thank you <laughs> <laughs> whoa maybe i knocked my head around uh, but while I was going down in the shower, and before anybody laughs, I mean, like, you know, directionally, um, I have one of those, like, soap dishes that's on the on the wall, you know? Do you, do you know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about? They're usually kind of, yeah. like, shaped with, like, little shell grooves, as if, like, yeah, maybe if we put, like... A, make it kind of look like a shell, people would be like, oh, the ocean, as opposed to, like... Hey, it's a depressing bachelor suite bathroom. Um, not to denigrate my shower. My shower is fucking amazing because I spent tons of fucking money on my shower head when I moved in. Because I was like, I'm going to be spending a lot of time here, so let's do this. Um, yeah, and I, I caught this soap dish that is attached to the wall uh, from my lower back to just above my shoulder blade. So I've got this, like, two-foot-long gash in my back Oh, that was a pain in the bitch to, like, stop bleeding. What I basically had to do was, like, lay some gauze out on a towel and then, like, lie down on it and, like, curl my knees up. So I was pressed against it and listened to Deep Space Nine playing in the background. Um, yeah, so um, I I may have really, really embarrassingly killed myself this week twice. Um, happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to see you guys again. Um, has yeah. it given me a new lease on life? Nope. Still a miserable shitstorm. Mm. Uh, still not happy with just about everything that's going on in the world. And, uh, now I just have a really long cut to show for it. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you know, um, these things happen, but I don't, I don't want to die alone unless I do it on my own terms, you know, like riding a motorcycle into the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Okay. Or like, you know. Skydiving into the meteor crater in Arizona. I have a couple comments. Yeah. Um, one, uh, excellent way to watch Deep Space Nine. Uh, uh, so there's that. Yep. Um, like presenting to it. Um, so <laughs> you got that yeah. going on. Yep. yep. Yeah. <laughs> second, why are Odo you naked can all, make the... all those shapes? Yeah. Um, second, why are you naked all the time? Because I know why I am. But, like, you just said you were, like, eating naked yep. also? Yep, I was eating naked. Neat. Yeah. You just in, are you just into it, or is there a, were there a story? I'm into it. Okay, you know, that's it. All right, that's like, all I wanted to know. Like, today, today is actually the first day that I kind of feel like it's warm in the apartment, so I'm a little dressed down for utilitarian purposes, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm down with it, you know? Okay. Like, if it's, if it's... <sighs> I'm I'm not even going to say if it's comfortable, you know, even like a little yeah. cool comfortable, clothes are coming off. That's it. Yeah, that's fair. 
It's um, also nice because when I walk by the mirror, I'm like, nice. <laughs> I have no full length mirrors in my apartment for that very reason, but I am naked I almost have, all like, the time. I have like three, practically. Wow. Not that, like, I bought three full-length mirrors. But, like, you know. It's like, this is going to be the one f- that I look f- at the backside, and this is going to be the one for the front. Like, you know, I have I have one that's my closet door in my bedroom, and then I've got another <laughs> one that's uh, that leads to, like, where my washer and dryer is, because I have a washer and dryer in suite, because I'm a baller like that. I also have a water heater in suite. Have you guys heard of a water heater in the apartment? Yeah, I mean, my, mine is uh, in the closet uh, in the uh, kitchen. I've, I've, ne- I've never seen that. I've never heard yeah. of a water heater out of the... What? What's the opposite? The, well, having, like, a, a grand central one for, like, the building. Oh, my, mine just happens to be in, you know, in, in there. Um, uh, all right. My, my... I, want, I want comments, okay? I want people to tell me exactly. if they live in apartment buildings, condominiums, whatever the hell you want to call them or something like that, um, if they have water heaters in their apartment, mine is in my, my coat closet, right? Or if they just, like, get it from the building. I want to hear mm. about this because I've never lived in a place, uh, like an apartment, that had a water heater in the apartment. I could totally be wrong about this, but it may have something to do with the fact of um, uh, who, who, whoever is is the Canadian company that does this, but calculating what you owe as opposed to everyone else owes. BC Hydro. Okay. Because it's regional. Yeah. Okay. It might have something to do with that. I do not know. I do not know how Canada work. Uh, Pretty but, well, um, actually. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's probably... It's probably a functional thing, and and uh, like, it's it's probably a money thing. I've just, I could be, I, I've could just, be wrong. I have never seen it. That's all. Like it, it 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 has never been a thing that I have seen. Hmm. The other right. small piece of news I has is that uh, has has have is that um, a corpse flower is about to bloom in Vancouver. Is that good? Um, it's rare. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, so long as it's not hurting anyone, that I'm okay with corpse Well, fires. it stinks to hell, as you might actually, oh. you know. So it does hurt someone. Well, if you're nearby. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> like, apparently, like, this is, and it's, it's kind of cool. Apparently, this flower, like, makes this terrible stench in order to attract flies that feed on decaying bodies and that's what they use to pollinate oh so that's why it's called that yeah well it, oh, okay. it's i mean it also stinks apparently right. it smells like um <laughs> people have said this rotting flesh um uh, hot okay. garbage discarded mm. diapers old discarded diapers so yeah it's um it's huge too it's like like the 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 flowers like eleven inches or like twelve inches long or something like that. Yeah, I'm a little I'm a little irked uh, or, or confused by how so many people around there would know what rotting flesh smells like. But then again, all Canadians are hunters. So. Yes, it's true. <laughs> all right, um, cool. Uh, we have some time before uh, questions. Do any of you, or do either of you, uh, have any other big topics? I could jump into one, but it's probably not going to be lengthy. I mean, I have infinite, but um, do, I can do a quick one here, and then we can get to yours. We'll see how the time is like. How does that feel? Okay. Um, I just played a game uh, called The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. It's oh. on. I got it for free on Steam. I think it's free everywhere that it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, Okay, it's from Don't Nod, the people who made Remember Me and Life is Strange. In fact, Captain Spirit and is... And Vampire. <laughs> and Vampire. Um, Captain Spirit is set in the Life is Strange universe. It's kind of a... I don't want to say tech demo, but it's like a, the thing they were making to sharpen uh, their skills and so forth, their technology and their pipeline for Life is Strange Season 2. And the game ends with the message being like, ah, the story will continue in Life is Strange 2. Um... So that that's the background of this game. It's very short. I beat it in like a little over an hour. 
Um, it's maybe like two or three hours if you're trying to do everything, but the game's premise is simple. You're a young boy with an over um, uh, overactive imagination who imagines that he is Captain Spirit, a superhero, and you spend a mundane day at home with your dad, who keeps drinking. That's... That's really the whole game, is you're in this house, and you can kind of imagine yourself as a superhero being like, I have powers, and I'm going to wash the dishes. Pendus man. <laughs> I have powers, and I'm going to build a snowman in the backyard. I have powers, and I'm going to turn on the water heater. And in the background, your dad keeps drinking and yelling at the TV and asking you if anybody's said anything about the bruises. And... I've I've seen uh, I listen to a lot of video game podcasts, so I've heard people talk about this game, and a lot of people say like, "Oh, it's doing the, the you know the abusive dad trope." I've seen it a thousand times. Not really interested, but um, for, I think for obvious reasons, if you listen to my output, uh, I found it incredibly creepy. Um, and like I, I think I tweeted about this, but like I I didn't cry when I played the game. I cried like half an hour later. Like, I, after I finished, I went and, like, did some dishes and, like, checked Twitter and stuff. And then I had, like, a little mini meltdown. Um, because it's it's really the little details, right? Like, they could have made a game where this dad just beats the shit out of his son for an hour and a half, right? Detroit, like, that's becoming human. <laughs> it's, it's not hard to depict child abuse. It's hard to make it feel human because it's such a monstrous thing Mm -hmm. anyone can just be like and then he punched him like that's nothing but the thing the things the game does are so much lower key like it's like the father clearly cares about the son but is it it's hard it's hard to explain no no i get it like because there's it's a it's a complicated mixture of emotions when you get into something abusive you know, mm-hmm. because because they're really nice to you most of the time, and and they're really sweet, and I care about them, and and so on and so forth. It's just that when, you know, things get bad, and and then yeah, like people people victims often rationalize to themselves what's going on, and afterwards, when when it's all said and done, well, you know, he still is my dad. Like, you know, the, the abuser is human. Yeah, and I think, like, obviously the superhero thing is, like, a coping mechanism, right? Because it's hard to face his life. And I think you I personally, drawing a lot of, you know, anecdotal evidence here, but it's like, I have an extremely active imagination. I do fiction stuff for a living. You know, like, I, I don't think it's at all uh, a, a unusual coping mechanism to be that kind of person. So it's, like, very in, it, intensely personal for me. But also, it's just... These things that I don't even know if most people picked up on them. Like, there's a part where someone mentions Christmas, and I immediately, like, had a fucking, like, fight, fight or flight response to that in, like, the way the dad reacted, which was, like, there's this this undercurrent of, like, I'm already guilty that I'm not going to be able to get you what you want, so I've failed as a dad, and I'm embarrassed, I'm ashamed, and that shame and embarrassment is making me angry. And, like... Every every year is a you know like basically my entire teenage years it's like Christmas oh yeah that's when someone gets the shit beat out of them because like that's the, that progression is going to happen because like it, it doesn't you didn't do anything but the situation it creates like ang it's like this whole thing and like that stuff and it's like oh the yelling at the TV like I I I have a hard 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 time watching sports with people who yell at the TV right it's like a thing for me and it's like this in there so um that yeah i don't know i don't know if any, everybody can appreciate it my understanding is like the game has uh, largely been written off by a lot of people like they're playing and they're like oh i see what they're doing and they just move on uh i think it's incredibly effective but i think maybe uh it's not obvious which is weird i don't know it may you know what it made me, it made me think about all the stuff i'm missing like if if there's like something about like an experience I don't, I haven't had, and I write it off. That's I. That's what I've been thinking about a lot. Is just like, there's probably a lot of art that I didn't connect with that's actually really powerful. Uh, so, um, I kind of lost my train there. Leon, are you back? Oh, I lost Leon. I I, I am returned. I'll turn off my thing here. I I basically just wanted like a few minutes where I had my AC on. 
Um, um, how was the last episode uh, for everyone uh, sonically <laughs> with all the fireworks and stuff? Did that go over well? I, I got rid of it. Oh, I got, I got rid of nearly all of the fireworks uh, except except for when I'm talking uh, and I just couldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like it's it was manageable. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Uh, that heroic effort by Leon to salvage that uh, is this whole <laughs> summer is going to be very difficult. The, the heat yeah. is killing all of us, so. Yeah, I'm um, doing okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> fuck off, Canada. Yeah, I'm going. I'm actually going to Canada later this month, so I'm I'm looking forward to it, to it being a few degrees um, better or, or cooler. Is that is that Con Bravo you're going to? That yeah, that would be Con Bravo. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I did want to talk about one thing real quick before we go into questions. Mm-hmm. Um, the Indiana Jones movie uh, has been pushed back another year, so it's not going to happen till 2021. And I'm okay waiting a while for movies because there's always a bunch of other movies that I could be watching in the meantime. No, there that aren't. Is not a... There's going to be no <laughs> movies till 2021. That, 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 but that's the thing. There's like I, I don't mind that it's going to no, be. No, Leon, all than... the old movies are going away. Haven't you heard? They're, Jesus they're going Christ. to space. Okay. The point is this: I don't, that part doesn't bother me, but also like Harrison Ford, TikTok. Um, I'm sorry, but he's going to be 79 uh, when that movie debuts, which means he'll either be so old that you won't believe him as an action hero, or he might not. I'm, I'm not trying to be morbid, but he he flies planes a lot. <laughs> is Sh- um, first of all, is Shia LaBeouf coming back? I have no idea. All we know is that Steven Spielberg is directing it, and Harrison Ford has says he's in it, and that it's coming out in 2021, and the writers cannot figure out what to do. You know what? who I, th- you know who I thought would have been way better in that role as Indiana Jones' son, who? Jake Gyllenhaal. Sure, also a good a, um, a good actor, which helps. Yes, <laughs> yeah, he's 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 a bit he's uh, noticeably older than Shia LaBeouf. Well, so. the thing was is that like, it, uh, did you guys ever see the Prince of Persia adaptation? No, not like not the greatest video game to movie adaptation, but it was serviceable. You know, like it was mm-hmm. Silent Hill serviceable, right? Mm-hmm. And in it, he plays this like cocky, kind of like streetwise Prince of Persia, I guess, who, like, there's a, there's a, there's a bit in it where he, he literally does the whole, hey, I got this, and then screws everything up, and I was like, (laughs) that's Indiana Jones right there, like, that's him. How wild yeah. is it that when a woman turns, like, 30, they can't do leading roles anymore, but when a man turns yeah. 70, they're like, yeah, he's the premier action star of our <laughs> age. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stallone and Schwarzenegger are still uh, doing action movies. Schwarzenegger is going to be in the next Terminator movie. Uh, it's all bullshit. I did look it up, by the way. I was curious. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is five years older than Shia LaBeouf, but also, like, Shia LaBeouf has, like, little boy face. Mm-hmm. Um, so he could play a little younger, whereas Jake Gyllenhaal looks like he's a guy in his thirties. Shia LaBeouf also um, has saying racist stuff. Yeah, but face. I'm, I'm I'm talking yeah. about I'm talking about when Crystal Skull came out. You know. Yeah, yeah I know that's what I'm saying. When Crystal Skull came out, it, it was like um, he. Well, I guess they could like play 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 him as a, as a slightly older character. Is what I'm trying to yeah. say. It, Mm. <laughs> they'll acknowledge the f- linear nature of time <laughs> no i just i just mean like the whole in in crystal skull um like indiana you can, jones you can was still like, find out like who your dad is when you're in your late 20s you know absolutely but he was like he was he was purposely meant to be like childish and immature and like still figuring his shit and out. that worked um, really really well <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Look, I'm not. I'm gonna I'm not gonna sit here and defend uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I'm just saying I understand why that was the the, the choice they made with casting. Um, so, anywho, uh, it is uh, just about time uh, for questions because it's about ten o'clock, and that's usually when we start. Um, unless you guys have anything really pressing to say before we do that. Um, let me see. I I, I play more stuff. We can do it next week. Not, not none of it's time sensitive. Um, yeah, just uh, okay. give me a rundown of some names. Um, I played Rime, R-I-M-E. Mm-hmm. Um, I played uh, the Ratchet and Clank remake. Mm-hmm. That was a while ago, but it's on my list here. I played a game called Bound. Um, yeah, and I want to talk about uh, Breath of the Wild. That's what I have on my list here. Okay. All right. Bound was another 90s erotic thriller. Okay, cool. <laughs> 
I brought it around. Thank you. I'm um, learning stuff yeah. today, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> let's start with questions here. Uh, JJ Hernandez asks, fa- uh, don't take this question lightly. It's important to me personally, okay? Yeah. Can we be serious <clears throat> for a second? All right. Okay. JJ Hernandez asks, favorite dog from fiction? Dog meat. Damn. God, just immediately swished. That's a very good dog. He's a very good dog. Mm. I can't think of a whole lot. Uh, what one, one, one comes to mind, but it's not like it's like a it's small. Um, you were gonna say Air Bud. Part. You were gonna say Air Bud. No, 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 no. It's it's like the most serious dog. Oh. Um, but it, <laughs> but it, the Cohen Brothers presents a most serious dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a there's a part in um the the novella of Mice and Men where um uh, Lenny and George come into like the bunks of like uh the, the farmhands. And one of the characters has this very, very old dog. And one of the uh, other uh, farmhands convinces him to, um, the, not not uh, the owner of the dog, but to, for someone else to go out back and kill this dog who has been, just cannot possibly be enjoying life. And then they go to sleep and then the guy kills the dog. And then um, the owner of the dog kind of like, he's not happy about it. And he says, I should have killed my own dog. And that's the end of the chapter. And it, it, it's it's foreshadowing. Uh, so there's that. But also, it's just a really good uh, part of that book. Um, that's not a great answer for this comedy podcast. <laughs> um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google fictional dogs okay. and find one that's better. Yeah. I mean, you do that. I also immediately what sprang to mind was a kind of a downer uh, dog too, which is uh, the, the coon hounds from where the red fern grows. Uh, Old Dan and little Ann are the names of those dogs. Um, and they were very important to me when I was younger. I don't younger. think I know those. You've never read where the red fern grows? No, no. Oh my God. It's, it's an incredibly powerful book. Um, I, I once did a, a Blistered Thumbs article, like the top 10 best dogs in video games. I'm very proud of the article, which I, I assume exists on the Wayback Machine somewhere. But um, I, I, I kind of went hog wild on that topic. Um, what comes to mind from that, uh, Koromaru from Persona 3, who's based on Hachiko, mm-hmm. the real life dog who was like so loyal to his master. He stayed at the train station like every day, even after his like, like for decades after his owner died. Are you, are you talking about the dog who takes the train to the grave? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's actually four seven, but they, they made a, a statue of him in Japan. He's like, okay, the- no, no, not, not Japanese. No, I'm thinking there's an English dog. Who like mm-hmm. who takes a train to like visit his master's grave? Apparently, mm. but he's not fictional. Like this, that's a real dog. Yeah. yeah, the Hachiko is a real dog. Um, I, I try to remember exact the exact story, but the dog was just like stayed every day waiting for uh, his late owner, and it was like just you know national like thing. Cause, uh, I don't want to generalize, but it's like obviously loyalty is a much uh, a very important part. Of, Does dog know, from Half Life Two count? Um, yes. He's, he's a good a pretty, boy. He's a pretty good boy. He's a good boy. I got a, I got another one. Yeah. Um, th- I went through a list, uh-huh. and to me, uh-huh. the most significant to the plot dog to a movie that is not really about dogs uh-huh. is Daisy the Beagle from John Wick. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, significant, I guess. I don't, I didn't really get a great sense of her personality. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it, true, also true, but, like, that's the one that pops into my head, because, like, the movie happens because of it, mm-hmm. so, okay. What um, God? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. White, White God was a pretty good dog, but, like, in a very complex <laughs> way. Johnny? Yeah. You're the oh best. My God. Um, I was gonna say, uh, fuck, look, fuck, Austin, fuck. you're the one who keeps saying like overthrow the the system, and this dog fucking did it. But then was uh, also like, hey, I kind of love you, so I'm gonna leave you alone. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to find my list on on the way back machine, but Isabel from Animal Crossing and um, Missile from Ghost Trick. I think Missile was number one. Uh, Missile is a Pomeranian from the game Ghost Trick, which is a a visual novel uh, puzzle game by Capcom. And it's extremely good. Um, if you haven't played Ghost Trick, I highly recommend it. It was a Nintendo DS game, very underrated, uh, a phenomenal uh, kind of game about a guy who's uh, a ghost and can possess things to solve puzzles. But the dog in it, Missile, is the best boy who's ever lived. He literally saves the day across the barriers of time and space and love. And he is based on the game 
director's real dog. Um, he put his he loved his dog so much he made him the hero of his video game. <laughs> Um, and there's a song about him. Um, it's on YouTube. I'm trying to, I, I, I'll leave a link in the chat. I don't know if you want to put it in like the show notes or something, but there's a song about this dog that he's so beloved. Um, okay. that's the last, that's the last uh, dog I can think of. Yeah. I have just one more, uh, from 101 Dalmatians, uh, number 87. <laughs> <laughs> when did you think of that joke and how long did it take you to get there? Uh, I'm, I'm just looking through the list and then it came to me. Good, good stuff. Um, yeah. all right. Next question. Uh, at Christmas morgue, <laughs> that's a good name. Christmas wow. morgue. Uh, does Austin still play fire emblem heroes? And if so, have you spent money on it? So fire emblem heroes is the mobile game. Um, so Nintendo's mobile strategy has been kind of hit and miss. Um, a lot of people played, uh, fire emblem and it's still pretty popular, but nowhere near as popular as Pokemon go. The obvious winner, while you have things like Animal Crossing and Mario Run, which had a kind of huge explosive starts and then petered off very quickly. Um, I do play Fire Emblem Heroes pretty much every day for like 10 minutes. It's like a thing I do like in the morning getting ready and it's like you get credits for logging in or whatever. So I think it's been like two years and I play it like every day. So yeah, and uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I, I have uh, mixed feelings about addictive behavior. I, I kind of... Uh, feel bad about how much i drink coffee as well it's i don't know I, that's not maybe not rational but um i am still playing i sp- have spent money on it so it's the only mobile game i've ever spent money on and i think they deserve it they made a really good game i stopped playing animal crossing immediately i, f- I fucking hated pocket camp really yeah okay it was it's not a game so the fire emblem heroes is cool because they really distilled the essence of fire emblem it's a, like a little chess game and it's like you can make, there's some pretty tough challenges. Animal Crossing is literally just clicking on people. It's, yeah, I don't know. If I was still in games media, I would write like an entire, you know, 2000 word think piece about that stuff, but I'm not. So fuck it. Yep. Um, do you guys right. play any mobile games? Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I do. Yeah. What's up? Uh, there's a... You sound disappointed in yourself. No, it's, it's not like the thing about it is, is that I play them. I play them distractionary. Like I play them mm. on the toilet. Or, like, when I'm waiting for something to happen, you know? There's a, there's a Star Trek game I play. I think it's called Timelines. And then there's a, a, a Marvel game that's just, like, one of those match three fucking bejeweled mm. games. When you said, when you, said you, you play it while waiting for something to happen, it made me think of, like, a millennial waiting for Godot, where they never talk <laughs> to each other. All they do is play <laughs> mobile games. <laughs> <clears throat> And then, and then in the second act, all they do is play like Atari. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, you, uh, Leon joked like, "Oh, you sound like you feel bad about yourself." Like, I don't know if it was clear. I, I do have like weird feelings about like this is bad. Like, I'm not spending this time productively. This game is made as kind of just a, a psychological trick to get you to spend money on that's, JPEGs. That's how I feel about just about every mobile game. You know, like it's not. It isn't. <sighs> They don't spark real joy. It, yeah, if I have access to anything else, I will do something else. Like, if I have access to my computer or, like, my TV or, like, music or something like that. Like, I don't, I don't play mobile games when I go on public transit because I bring my MP3 player with me and I listen mm-hmm. to music. Yeah. You know, I usually try and keep, like, some reading in my, uh, in, in, in the bag that I usually carry with myself, be it uh, periodical publications like Skeptical Inquirer or, or the novel that I'm currently reading or something like that. You know, like, I, I only tend to play them when it's like, well, I guess there's nothing else. Yeah, I don't know. I played Fallout Shelter for a little bit after it came out, and it reached a point where it's like, oh, to optimize. My brain worked in such a way, really, that I was like, I I need to optimize this if I'm going to play, which means I need to play for a certain amount of time every day. And then I just like realized what my brain was committing to, and I like, in a nope panic, deleted it. It was like a horror movie. I got jump scared by my own phone. I was like, this cannot be me. This cannot be my life. Um, yeah, I don't think I've dropped in in my my Fallout shelter for like a year. It, it's a uh, that that was a very predatory design because all the timers and it was like you had yeah. to stay glued to it. Oh well, man, life. did you ever play the Dungeon Keeper game? 
No, but I've I've heard. Yeah. Holy fuck! It took like a day to do anything. Also, the like, Harry Potter like, game was not even not even do anything interesting. Like you know, because it all takes place underground, so it's like you have to dig out areas in order to put dungeon rooms down. So it'd be like, I want to dig out this one tile where to like get any kind of effective room. You need at least three by three, and mm-hmm. that is like the least you need. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I want to dig out this one tile. It'll be like, ah, come back tomorrow. And so it was, not... it was literally like a one-click-a-day game, pretty much. That, that's not even, like, good predatory design, right? Like, there's a way to do it. Like, Pokemon Go is a, a good example of being like, we want you to spend money, but we're going to ease you there with free content or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just, like, they yeah. gave up the game immediately. It's not even good form. It's the slow, it's the slow ramp. You need someone to take you by the hand and be like, no, it's going to be great. Look at this. I've got you a milkshake. Hey, why don't you go ahead and take that? After you've done that, I've got some bacon wrapped scallops right here. If you just, well, just put them off to the side right there. You can take them when you want. Yeah. With with Fire Emblem, you get orbs for logging in. So I, I literally don't have to play it to get rewarded. I could just click on the button on my phone and I'll get it. I do play it, though, because it's a good game. But yeah, yeah, there's a there's a way to do it that it's not gross. I just, I, I, mm. I don't like mobile games. There, there are good games that are on mobile. Yeah. But they're not good mobile games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's a weird distinction, but yeah. I don't, um, I don't enjoy, like, worse than mobile games, I don't enjoy advertisements for mobile games. I feel like I see them only on YouTube, really, where it's like, no context army men fighting. Yeah. Or just like, you know... A bunch of jets show up and shoot at each other, and it's like war face. Yeah, well, that's a real. The thing is that you, the fake name you made up is that a real game. By no, I, I know it's. I, I know it's a real game. In the middle okay. of saying it, I was like, ah, shit. So what I should have. <laughs> yeah. What I should have said was like war tonsils. Yeah, because that's really that's that's really what the gaming space is right now. Is you know just pick two things and cram them together and be like. Deadly yeah. eyelash. Sometimes I think about the time I said on this podcast, "Kill Zone Shadowfall," and Leon dissolved in laughter. Like it's, <laughs> that was a very good moment. Um, yeah. All right. Next question. Uh, Syretha asks Leon, "What should the WWE oh. do with Tyler Breeze now that Fandango is out to injury for the next six months?" Parentheses. Austin. One, two, three. <laughs> Wrestling! Wrestling! <laughs> we didn't do it. It's hard to do this over Skype. It's fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, basically, um, uh, Fandango, who is great, uh, is injured, which is not. And uh, his tag team partner, Get uh, well, Tyler Fandango. Breeze. Yeah. Um, Tyler Breeze is. is a very good worker and a very good talker, and he's very charismatic, and he's over, and he's wonderful, and he has very, very good boots. Um, but I... What I want from him is for someone to just pull the trigger and say, screw it, let's just push a new guy uh, that we've had on the roster for a while instead of, like, the latest, our latest acquisition or the people we've been pushing for the last 10 years. Because there's this thing where um, they bring someone in new to the company and says, we're going to try it with this guy, and then they try it with this guy. Or they keep uh, focus on um, some of the people who have been there forever. But there's also these people who have been there forever, and they just don't do ever do anything significant with them. And that's Tyler Breeze. Um, and uh, basically, last year, he and Fandago were doing these really cool skits. And for like a few weeks, it was the best thing in the company. And then WWE just stopped because they're dumb. And now they were just treading water for a while. And now half of the tag team is injured. Um, what I want... Is for uh, someone to just say, um, this is one of our most talented guys on the roster. Let's just try to make him into a thing. Uh, we can do it. All we have to do is make him win matches and people will uh, start to get behind him again. Uh, they did it with the B team recently. And now everyone loves the B team. There were like these nobodies, these jobbers who have been there in WWE for years and years and years. And they hadn't really done anything significant with them. And then they just decided to give them a new name and have them uh, win and hug each other when they win. And now everyone loves them. You can do that with him, too. Frankly, Tyler Breeze is better than both of these two guys, the the B team, even though I like the B team. So just uh, go with it. Um, What I think they'll actually do, I think they'll... 
Yeah, I think what they'll actually do is is put him in a tag team with like Chad Gable because he's not really doing anything right now. Who is also a really talented? Okay, wait, guy. is that his real name? Yep, I'm almost positive. Let me double check that. Uh, I think he uses his real name because he was like a, an Olympian before, and they usually use like their. They, I mean, I, I know that names. you know that the WWE sometimes dabbles in real identities. Yeah, they use they, like Kurt Angle is his name is Kurt Angle. We, oh, you know what? I'm super wrong. I'm sorry. I'm dumb. Uh, no, uh, Chad Gable is not his real name. His real name is Charles Betts. Okay. Um, that's, that's okay. That's, that's right. I'm relieved by that. Thank you. Yeah. Because Kurt Angle okay. is bad enough. <laughs> it's just his Chad, name. yeah. He's too, fa- but like, he, he's too famous to have like a different name when they says, okay, we're going to bring in Kurt Angle I, because I he's know really that, famous. But like at some point in time, a, a mother and a dad were like in the maternity ward and they were like, Kurt. Kurt Angle. <laughs> He's not even the only Kurt in the company. Um, there's a uh, yeah. Guess, there's Curtis wasn't he Axel. Was he an Olympic wrestler first too? Kurt Angle. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Uh, Kurt Angle was the Olympic gold medalist in in wrestling, yeah. and and because because he's like a big famous name, they weren't going to bring him into the company, pretend he's someone else, and call him like um, gonna, the mute. I'm not like dumping on the guy because he was an Olympian <laughs> or anything like that, or even right. he was a like you know a charismatic presence in the WWE, which I seem to recall he was. But oh yeah, I'm I'm just like his parents named him Kurt Angle. <laughs> They didn't well well in terms of like his last name they were stuck with that um in terms of his first name I don't I I've, I've never heard anyone have a big problem with the name Kurt. They should have named so him Acute. Like... Ah. So anyway. So anyway. <laughs> um yeah. Uh what I what I th- what I want to happen is for them to pull the trigger on a Tyler Breeze uh si- um singles push. What I think will happen is they will uh pair him up with the other guy who's usually a tag team wrestler but currently isn't now. Uh, and that's probably what will happen. Um, yeah. All right. That's it. Uh, question here from Omnilord Integrated at Spatial Shepherd on Twitter. Uh, th- oh my. Thoughts I on? Like, I like yeah? having Omnilords integrated because, like, having mm-hmm. to outsource that shit is just awful. It's just more efficient. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> the question is thoughts on Caesar's Legion and complex but irredeemable villains. I alluded to this question earlier, mm. uh, but in Fallout New Vegas, a game which I am still stunned is as good as it is. Um, the main conflict uh, is ma- it, I'm, I'm simplifying, but it's between the NCR, the New California California Republic, Republic. and the Caesar's Legion. And the way the game presents it is kind of a good versus evil thing, and you can side with either, and then there's, like, later you learn there's other choices. Uh, but the, the main, like, you know, the the good guys and the bad guys is these two factions. And one of my only disappointments with New Vegas, besides the bugs, it's still very buggy. Like, part of the reason I put it off was I kept thinking, like, oh, I'll play it when they patch it, I'll play it when they patch it. When, and, when do, what did you play it on? PC. Uh, you, uh, there were, like, mods and shit like that that fixed those things, dude. I know. No, listen. I used console commands to finish like half a dozen quests that were no, li- no, literally like, not have completable. You, have you never been to Nexus mods? I don't. I don't really fuck around with mods. <laughs> uh, they they are. And if you're gonna play a Bethesda, all right. Public service announcement. Yeah. Hey kids, have you been playing Bethesda RPGs? Well, I bet you're probably frustrated that the design isn't as up to snuff as you think it would have been. Well, I feel like I just got caught sneaking out of a house. <laughs> You're playing the Bethesda you. games without mods in my house? <laughs> Lucky for you, there's this thing called mods. Yes, that's right. Unofficial patches, fixes, tweaks, all sorts of things to make your gaming experience that much smoother. If you have questions about mods, ask me. <laughs> um, so, New Vegas is still very buggy, even patched. Um, but here's what I was going to say. So was so good. Yes. In the game that's shipped, uh, the Caesar's Legion is basically evil. They All they do on screen is crucify people and enslave people. There's like the, not first, much... the first time you meet them, they've burned a whole town down and crucified a bunch of people. And yeah. it's like, oh, okay. These are the bad guys. Yeah, they're pretty much exclusively the crucifixion and, and slavery people. And the NCR is mostly the good guys. Like, there's a su- there's a, a, a subquest where you learn that they did a massacre of civilians once. But mm-hmm. it's it's an optional thing that you kind of have to work for. And even then, they kind of waffle on, like, I don't know, man. It was a miscommunication. I was just following orders. But uh, for me, 
the the best Fallout stuff is defined by a kind of uh, moral. I don't even say moral ambiguity because that's like that's like ooh Watchmen, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> moral ambiguity. But like no easy answer. Like the Ten Penny yeah. Tower quest in Fallout Three is like my favorite part of that game because it's yeah, like hard hard situations make for difficult choices. Yeah, like nobody here is good. They're all just doing their best. What do you want? And it's it's like that. But in Vegas, NCR versus Caesar's Legion is pretty black and white, which is a disappointment. Mm-hmm. Um, so this question is thoughts on Caesar's Legion, but and complex but irredeemable villains. What's interesting to me is that the game New Vegas was envisioned as something else. Uh, they finished it in like a year and a half, which is Herculean, right? Like linear games, like corridor shooters, A to B set piece games take two, three, four, five years to complete. Right? But like, I mean, this is Obsidian's bread and butter, you know. Yeah, I mean, and also they had a lot of Fallout 3 assets to work with, but I'm just saying, they made the game in a, a miraculously short window. I, yeah. I, I've seen it somewhere between 13 and 18 months, and that's why it's so buggy, first of all, but also they had to cut a lot of stuff, and I've been reading... They, also, they had yeah. to stretch that engine as well. They had no experience. Nobody... It wasn't... It's not even the experience. It's that the engine was like well out of date by the time that they had gone to move with it. And I know that Bethesda is still working with it. Like, it's the same engine in Skyrim, but they've tweaked it and changed it and things like that. But yeah, it was G- like... Gamebryo, for the record. It's, yeah, Gamebryo. It's the same fucking engine they used for, like, Oblivion. I think it's the same engine they used for Morrowind, even. Yeah. Like, Dark Age of Camelot was designed on the Gamebryo engine. Nobody... I played that. What? I played that. I was like, nobody who started work on New Vegas had ever used it before, that game yeah. engine. It was, like, literally an entire different way of doing their jobs. And it's it's beyond impressive that they got it done. And they the game... had to wrestle tons of shit into it. Like, the, the... whole reputation thing. Mm-hmm. They had to wrestle that into the game. Yeah, because, because it was just it was not ready to do it. Yeah, there was that's why there's no factions of Fallout 3. I'm just the fact that the game exists is a mira- is a miracle. The fact that it's good is incredible. The fact that it's it's, it's one of the best RPGs ever made is like galaxy brain. Anyway, I oh, keep Austin, trying to get back I to I love you more and more everything like every time you say <laughs> something about New Vegas. <laughs> what I was going to say is I've been doing a lot of research. I've been reading like on the wikis and watching documentaries on YouTube and stuff. The way New Vegas was envisioned was that both Caesar's Legion and the NCR were much more complex. Like the NCR is basically the old world American ideal of like imperialism and military like military occupation and, and stuff. Uh, and it's it's not a, a good force. It's a complicated, messy, bureaucratic nightmare. And the Caesar's Legion uh, had a bunch of extra stuff in the game, like en- entire c- like civilizations and societies you could visit with like civilians and stuff. And it was like their whole thing was, are you willing to trade your freedoms for safety? Right? Like we're we're based on like ancient Rome. It's a strict caste system. Everyone has a place, but we're we're the best, and we'll protect you. And it was like actual uh, and a real choice between these two murky kind of ideologies and they didn't have time they just didn't have time so they cut out like all of the the legion civilians all of their non-crucifixion based locations (laughs) um so yeah like there's there's a lot of dialogue in the game files there's like uh areas that are referenced that don't exist um there's like maps and stuff from earlier builds that are are out there that have places that aren't in the game um there's a lot of shit there's an entire um caesar's legion uh companion like in the game you have people who can travel with you and there's like one person who represents the brotherhood of steel there's one person who represents the ncr there's one person who is a a, one of the zombies right but there's no person who likes caesar's legion but there was in in the original idea and that character is actually recycled for the dlc um and they have a completely different personality but they 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 represented the the legion ideology and we're like going to give flesh that out and stuff so New Vegas is phenomenal, but it actually could have been even better. It has all this cool stuff they were trying. That's the story of every Obsidian RPG, though, pretty much. But they're all still so fucking good. I love Alpha Protocol. (laughs) I know, I know. But, like, even when they they did, like, the, the crowdfunding for Pillars of Eternity... And everybody was like, money, 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 take this money, money, money. They were like, let's do it. 
And even still, they were like, we didn't get a chance to do everything that we wanted to do, so we had to, like, cut a couple of companions that we were going to write, and, mm-hmm. you know, but we still feel pretty good about the game. Yeah. Um, so I'm try- in it, by the way. Yep. So to try to answer the question... And I- the second one, by the way. <laughs> To try to answer the question, I almost always prefer complex villains. Um, I've had some of this uh, conversation with the Dice Funk audience because in all pretty much all the seasons I DM, uh, there's a point where the villain gets too likable and people start rooting for them. It happens a lot, especially in recent seasons where like, I can't wait until the antagonist kills the party because he's way nicer and cooler than the, the heroes and stuff. And I'm like, no, no, he's bad. He's bad. I promise. Um, so like, I, I get it. Um, but also there is, um, there's always this weird line between being complex and uh, humanizing fascism and evil, right? Like, yep. Yeah. I, I worry about that uh, a lot. Leon, you have thoughts. I, I watched a really good video that um, recently – actually, there were two of them, um, uh, uh, but by the same uh, person. I'm going to look up her name so I don't screw this up, uh, in which uh, explained why showing Thanos as genuinely loving his daughter while um, murdering her um, is – really troubling um and it's not like it's not like we can sit here and like debate whether or not he really loved his daughter because like the movie said like it the only way that the thing that he did could happen is if he did Mm -hmm. so the movie very explicitly says yes he did and that is really fucked up if you happen to be for example a child of an abusive parent and that abusive parent brought you to that movie uh, that is a weird thing that you're now going to internalize. Like, it, it uh, kind of makes so. it worse in a way, you know? Uh, it, it's so It's bad. a confluence of things, because in actuality, abusive people usually do love their victims. In fact, the, the most common, like, murder types is, like, domestic abusers, because... that. Yeah, but that's 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 the thing. It's not a. It's not super cool to call that love, especially for kids. No, I, 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 I get it, the problematic thing. It's just, like... There, yeah. If you're going to pr- portray that dynamic honestly, you r- run the risk of giving that message. It's the same reason why um, – What's I'm trying to remember the person who said – it was like a French philosopher who said there's no anti-war movies because all war movies glorify yeah. war. Um, it's, like, mm-hmm. it's like that thing where it's like, this is bad. Look at it. And, and people think, that's pretty cool. Uh, Wolf of Wall, Wall Street, any mafia movie, that, that's all that kind of stuff where mm. – yeah. Yeah, it's a whole thing. But yeah, the Thanos thing, I think I, I've been thinking about this a lot between Star Wars and <laughs> Infinity War. That um, I don't know if it's Americans or just people in general are so fucking bad at analyzing media <laughs> that it, it's hard to make films with any ambiguity <laughs> for a mass audience because they seem hell bent on misunderstanding shit. They, 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 they love it. Well, it's, um, it's why the, directors uh, like fucking Zack Snyder rise to the top. Oh my god! I mean, not the, the um, top, but you know, prestige yeah. at um, least. Yeah, the um, uh, YouTuber who made those videos is named uh, Maggie May Fish. I am subscribed to her channel, and she should have more subscribers. Uh, the two uh, videos uh, in question that reference uh, Thanos are called "Daddies in Film Part One and Part Two. I will get on uh, it. Yeah. Really, really good. Is that all one also, word, Maggie has... Mayfish? No, she, it's her first, middle, and last name. Like subscribed. Yeah. <laughs> he did it. And sorry, just so we're clear, I did smash that subscribe button. <laughs> good. Like that was not Hitting that him. was not a, a passive. Oh, well, okay, click. Okay. That was like I got the hammer out. Okay, and Hitting now my notification mouse is belt. Oh my god. Hit the notification bell too, or you will literally never know when she has a new video because YouTube sucks at that. No, you um, see, she, uh, uh, like Leon, here's what I do: is that I know you go you go into your subscriptions probably like I uh, do, yes I do, like, and then I scroll back and be like, okay, so you know what haven't I watched? Oh, this 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 right. this, this 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 this. Yes, but uh, so many people just don't do that, and that's the issue. Jerks. Um, anyway. Uh, I was trying to say she also has a really good one on Tim Burton's movies. Um, it's ah, very good. Uh, she's just uh, she's she. I think she worked or still worked for uh, works 
for Cracked, but now she's doing her own thing, and like uh, it's really good. I, anyway, I love some of the Cracked people. Do you guys watch Cody it's... Johnson? I do. I I just subscribed to his channel uh, recently. The uh, the news channel. Yeah, uh, yeah. Quite, it's quite good. I love his stuff. Yeah, I really wish there was a lot of uh, Daniel O'Brien stuff still floating around right now. Uh, yeah. But he is just, he's writing articles occasionally, but like isn't doing like any huge projects right now, which is fine. Take your time. <laughs> uh, you know, you don't, have, you don't have to like jump into a new career right after the, the last one. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I think I like a few people from Cracked a lot more than I've ever liked just Cracked. Katie Stoll uh, is, is really good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I haven't I been mean, to that site in like six years, but back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I basically went for like two people who who did uh, videos. One of them being Daniel O'Brien, and uh, but like most of the site is not for me. And now that like the people like I care about are gone, none of it is. So I, I don't go there anymore. I, I'm um, an OG but... Sean Baby Stan back from the EGM days. <laughs> okay. Right, right. You're old school, Austin, <laughs> Mister. I was eight years old when Wild Things came out. <laughs> Got me. Um, yeah, I, well, one more thing on the problematic uh, idiocy of people and their analysis of films. I've been holding this take back. I'm just going to throw it out there and run away like it's a smoke bomb. Um, the fact that Uh-oh. people can't get their heads around the fact that Luke Skywalker may have been changed by the events of the original Star Wars trilogy is fucking terrifying. It's no so, fucking so shit! Sociopathic. Anyway. Not, not, not only by the events of the original Star Wars trilogy, but also just time. Yeah. Also, also, not 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 yeah, also just nothing, uh, nothing were, happened, that's... guys. Nothing happened in the thirty years. He between, killed like, so yeah, many people. Like, he's he's obviously <laughs> the same person. I, as a thirty-eight year old, I'm still the same person as I was when I was eight. <laughs> God, I am so different now than I was like six years. I know. Ago. What I'm saying I've changed more than Luke Skywalker has changed <laughs> in, in like literally less time, and I haven't killed thousands this... of people. This whole weird kind of bullshit that, like, he was a supreme hero who was, like, utterly uncorruptible? It's not, it's, it has no basis to the text. It's literally like, this fantasy was, they've built in their minds. The biggest thing that he was afraid of, he walked into a cave <clears throat> on Dagobah <laughs> and was confronted with his biggest fear. And his biggest fear was that he would be seduced by the dark side. He's so yeah, he's afraid all... of the dark side. Yeah, and people are like, Luke head Skywalker's so pure, he wouldn't, like, ever raise a sword against his, like, nephew. And I'm like, do you know how scared of the dark side he is? Like, even yeah. for a split second, he'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah. And it, yeah, he's, I, he's so fucking scared of it, he ran away to a planet, didn't tell <laughs> anybody he was going. It was just like, nah, I failed everybody. Fuck it. That's it. I'm yeah, done. We- Luke Skywalker being afraid of the dark side is like his whole thing. So it's like, <laughs> it's just like right, also extrapolating whatever. it out. It's just like people seem to have fucking no empathy for anyone else. I know this is like a kind. It might seem like a stretch, but just like looking at the world and being like, people, everyone seems so f- unwilling to look at anybody else's point of view. And that like a fictional character, it's all spelled out in like six hours. You can just sit down and literally look at it. It's not hard. <laughs> it, mm, I'm just so frustrated. It's right there. Everyone, please. Please, just but, try. No, that's not I'm a hot gone. take. Okay. That's a take that's kind of gone a little bit cool, but you know what? We kept it in the oven because mm-hmm. we knew you were coming home, people. Yeah. And now that you're here, we took it out. We were like, hey, check out this warm take. I had the, I had an opportunity to make an episode about The Last Jedi, mm-hmm. um, but someone gave me uh, – instead of saying, hey, I want you to do this one thing – Someone said, hey, I have this list of, like, three things. You can pick one, and I picked a different one. Uh, so, you know, I probably I probably should wait until the, the, all three of the Star Wars sequel movies are done um, and then look into it anyway. Yeah, I think um, you might you might have missed, <laughs> you might have missed the, the rich vein of all the views, though, because I think there's a there's Star Wars burnout now. So, I was, I was oh going to well. say, that is exactly the thing I said when I walked out of The Phantom Menace for the first time. I was like, "No, no, no. Let's let's wait for all three. <laughs> it's 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 an arc. It's a it's a formed arc." Okay. But all right. In all right. in contrast, 
mm-hmm. I want to say. Yeah, I, I understand. I watched, I I watched understand. The Last Jedi just the other week again for the second time. It was okay. even fucking better the second time. Mm. It's because it's a good movie. It's such Probably. a good movie. Yeah. Um, we're about at time, but I wanted to get one more question in here. Um, it's Common Ryan H. Uh, at Novo. No, I, I always fuck up this name. Novo. Nuvo Art Nouveau. Punk. Nuvo Art Punk on Twitter. Sorry, American South mouth. Uh, question <laughs> is, most disappointing album from an artist you typically like? I, I read this question and my brain screamed at me that everyone... I mean, everyone already knows, but is there any more perfect answer to this question than Saint Anger? I I don't know. Do we? Nobody on this call listens to Metallica, and I'm gonna throw myself off a no, roof. No, no. I I I listen. I listen. To, I yeah. When I say I listen to Metallica, I don't really listen to anyone, but like I will listen to Metallica. Sure. <clears throat> um, Austin, but but like I if you're asking me, listened to Metallica. If you're asking me if I've like sat if I bought the album or I've listened to it all the way through, no, I have very few of them have I. Yeah, I I've listened to their singles. Okay. They're they're most of them are are pretty good. When did you stop oh, listening like. to Metallica Johnny? Back in like the early nineties, man. Ooh, okay. I was about to say that oh. there's a couple of different kinds of Metallica fans. There's the Metallica fans who say <laughs> they peaked with Injustice for All and everything after that was downhill. There are people who say they got off the train around Load Reload because that's when they sold out. Yeah, a- I, I was not. I was not down with Load Reload. Okay. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I I hung on after that. I'm a St. Anger boy. That's when I, I realized I had wasted a lot of my life. <laughs> I like Load and Reload quite a bit. Um, I don't like their earlier stuff very much, because that's just not my kind of music. Yeah. Um, but, Leon is the yeah. kind of people that Metallica sold out to. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for cutting your hair and everything. Yeah. <laughs> if you subscribe to it the... Was very, that was very important to me, obviously. If you subscribe to the sellout theory, then Leon is the, the target audience of that. Um, I love... Thanks. We don't talk about this uh, <laughs> enough, I feel. Do you guys know what the album art to Load and Reload are? Yeah, it's Blood and Cum. Yeah, it is. It's a picture of blood. Cool. It's Blood and Piss and Blood and Cum are the pictures oh. on the front of those two albums. Like, mm. really close-up pictures of those fluids. Who's Cum? Uh, an artist. It's a, like a modern artist who oh. did it. Oh. So it's not like James Hetfield's Cum? No, no, it's not. Um, so yeah, I, I have I have a theory that Saint Anger was the beginning of the end of rock music's relevance in Western culture. Like the Beatles, like made the guitar band a fixture of Western culture, and Saint Anger killed it, or at least you know g- hit it on the head so hard that it began dying. Yeah, um, okay. I don't have the stats in front of me to prove that, but that is my theory. There isn't a lot of rock music on like any of the radio stations I listen to, you know, when I, I mean, not that I like follow music that closely, but like I turn on the radio when I listen to the car. And unless I turn on specifically the one rock station in the area, all the other stations, like the mix stations, it's just, it's just the latest pop song, Yep, uh, which is, you know, fine. Some of them are fine, but like rock is not um, big anymore, I guess. Again, like I'm, I'm coming into this uh, conversation at a place of some ignorance. I don't follow music anywhere nearly as close, uh, anywhere as closely as uh, either of you. But that that seems to be my, um, what, what I gather. Yeah, it's- I think uh, people who are smarter than me would try to analyze like how the rise of like electronic music and dance music and different uh, like Hispanic influences and stuff have changed the direction of music. I'm saying as far as rock being able to hold its own, I think it dealt a f- like a fatal wound to itself with say anger and then as everything else was rising it fell off i it's it's such a di- disappointing doesn't even begin to cover anyway i've i've monopolized this question disappointing album from artists you like most disappointing uh when i was younger um whatever was the album right after okay computer um kid a? I, <laughs> you are a fool you don't, you don't like kid a yeah. <laughs> No, I don't like I don't like any Radiohead after um uh, after a okay, cake. Not even but in not rainbows. Be, not especially not in rainbows. Oh uh, my god! Uh, we can't do this. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, guys. We have definitely talked about this before. Okay. Uh, we have definitely talked about this. before. I feel like you usually um, try that, to hide being, your takes. That being said, that being said. Um, I might like it now if I listen to it again, because now I'm into, like, weird, kind of, like, atmospheric kind of music. 
Um, but when I was younger, I liked rock music. Mm-hmm. And when uh, Radiohead says, oh, here's our weird atmospheric mumbles, I was like, this is not for me at all. But I'm 36 now, and as, as previously mentioned, I'm very different now than I was when I... <laughs> you had a lot of so, character so, development. Yeah, who knows? No, no, I don't know. I don't know if I'm better, but I'm definitely different. Um, and so, like, I might uh, like all of uh, the post OK Computer uh, Radiohead now, but I'm just, but you know, that means I'll have to like sit down and listen to them. Uh, and I just haven't gotten around to that. It just seems like the kind of thing I might like now, but definitely hated when I was younger and into that band. Um, yeah, I, I think their later stuff is, feels more Leon to me because I didn't know you back then. But then again, I think you're right. being, you're you're being totally out of character. Uh, I don't see the connective tissue between who you used to be and who you are now. It's like yeah, got there was a huge writers. divergence in their material. Yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> anyway, Kid A is very good. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I remember. I remember there was a lot of. Mm-hmm. That's that's and that that's what 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 I listened to and I was like oh is this music no <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah at least where's like, the like, single listen to the national anthem and idiotic or idiotech I don't know I don't think they say it in the song but those no, are the you, two no no that, in rainbows mm. in rainbows I, is the best album that they've made since OK Computer there are theories that it's actually even a, a companion album to OK Computer because. Like, OK Computer and In Rainbows have the same, like, letter amounts. People like, <laughs> Radiohead no, fans. Oh, my God. I'm, no, I'm dead serious. And they've, like, arranged, like, playlists that are complementary and stuff like that. Like, you're supposed to listen to them together and things like that. And one's about, like, the disillusionment of technology. And one's about, like, rejuvenation in nature and... Johnny, the more you talk about this, the more I'm just seeing that meme of like the brain yeah. getting glowier and glowier. To no, I'm not. Point. I'm not saying I agree with this, and I'm not saying the band <laughs> said anything about this. I'm just saying people are like conspiracy. Yeah. I right, think Tom York right. would be surprised to hear this. Also, they've those unreleased OK Computer tracks, where well, they were unreleased until very recently, uh, they were like, oh, this stuff wasn't good enough to make OK Computer the best album of all time, and they're all bangers. They're all I, bangers. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> How is it possible that they're Manta fucking... Ray? Oh, my God. I like that one song uh, that they released uh, recently because of that. Um, I think it's like I Promise or something. Yeah, that's a very good song. Yeah, yeah I like that song. That song sounds like a song. <laughs> also, Man of War, if you haven't heard it. Oh, no, that's, Probably not. that's the one I'm thinking of, not Manta Ray, Man of War. Man of so, War s- okay. slaps. I, I think I'm, I'm probably going to have to go with, um, like, the only one I can think of right now is The Hawk is Howling by Mogwai. Mm. Haven't, okay. haven't like, been. Every single other one of their albums, I just adore front to back. And the hawk is howling. There's like three songs on it that I'm like, these are great, you know. So yeah, it's it's just it's. I mean, I'm a huge Mogwai fan. I I talked a couple of weeks ago about how important the the Scottish music scene was to me. Um, I, and and yeah, and they were they were really big. I was also thinking for a second there that I was gonna be like make a joke, and be like, yeah. Parachutes by Coldplay. It was the first <laughs> album I bought by them, and I was just so disappointed I didn't get any others. <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> We've been there. Um, so, yeah. Episode. Any, I thought that went well. Anything you guys want to say? It's time to pack the Supreme Court. <laughs> Let's leave. I got, I got uh, something to say. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Johnny. I keep cutting you off. Go ahead. You two interrupt the fuck out of each other every episode. I, I apologize. Go ahead. The first time I laid eyes on Terry Lennox, he was drunk in a Rolls Royce Silver Braith outside the terrace of the dancers. The parking lot attendant had brought the car out, and he was still holding the door open because Terry Lennox's left foot was still dangling outside, as if he'd forgotten he'd had one. He had a long, young-looking face, but his hair was bone white. You could tell by his eyes that he was plastered to the hairline, but otherwise he looked like any other nice young guy in a dinner jacket who had been spending too much money in a joint that exists for that purpose and no other. There was a girl beside him. 
Her hair was a lovely shade of dark red, and she had a distant smile on her lips. And over her shoulders, she had a blue mink that almost made the Rolls Royce look like just another automobile. It didn't quite. Nothing can. The attendant was the usual half tough character in a white coat with the name of the restaurant stitched across the front of it in red. He was getting fed up. Look, mister, he said with an edge to his voice. Would you mind a whole lot pulling your leg into the car so I can kind of shut the door? Or should I open it all the way so you can fall out? The girl gave him a look, which ought to have stuck at least four inches out of his back, but it didn't bother enough to give him the shakes. At the dancers, they get the sort of people that disillusion you about what a lot of golfing money can do for the personality. A low-swung foreign speedster with no top drifted into the parking lot, and a man got out of it and used the dash lighter on a long cigarette. He was wearing a pullover check shirt, yellow slacks, and riding boots. He strolled off, trailing clouds of incense, not even bothering to look towards the Rolls Royce. He probably thought it was corny. At the foot of the steps up to the terrace, he paused to stick a monocle in his eye. The girl said with a nice burst of charm, I have a wonderful idea, darling. Why don't we just take a cab to your place and get your convertible out? It's such a wonderful night for a run up the coast to Montecito. I know some people there who are throwing a dance around the pool. The white-haired lad said politely, Awfully sorry, but... I don't have it any more. I was compelled to sell it. From his voice and articulation, you wouldn't have known he had anything stronger than orange juice to drink. Sold it, darling. How do you mean? She slid away from him along the seat, but her voice slid away a lot farther than that. I mean, I had to, he said. For eating money. Oh, I see. A slice of spumoni wouldn't have melted on her now. I'm gonna keep going, you guys. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I was waiting for you to stop because I felt like at that point we were playing poetry chicken. Oh, Fucking no. hell! Uh, I was literally about to say, I wonder how long that chicken was gonna go on. I'm, That's what like, I, was. This, this, I feel like I won. This novel is uh-huh. three hundred and. 77, 79 pages, so... We're definitely done. <laughs> yeah. I, we, well, Leon, we won. We won the game yeah. of chicken. You did. Yeah, it was good. You did, guys. Congratulations. Now that your roses are 